So now let's go straight to the discussion and I have some prestigious guests seated right here on the table of life. One is no new face to the show and uh, one is a new face. And so let me introduce the lady first. I mean, she she is a Ghana sweetheart. I'll call her that because she's most loved by a lot of Ghanaians. She's looking at me. <laughs> She's a media personality and an actress, and it's it's an honor to have her here. And the other is a king of stage play. I mean, that's how we all know him to be, Andrew Tando. And then for Ghana sweetheart, Na Ashoko. Who doesn't know Na Ashoko? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome once again. Thank you. I love your table. Yes, table of life. Yeah. That's what we call it. <laughs> okay. So I, I know we are talking about, we are going to talk about um, a detective course, an exciting and intriguing stage play. And so I'll be asking you a lot about the play, but today is the first time Nashoka has come here. So I think I'll ask her all the questions I want to. Yeah. Feel <laughs> free. <laughs> Anyways, how have you been? Good. Pretty good. Um, We've been very busy in the past couple of weeks preparing mm -hmm. for our play. I know. And so I've been busy and I like busy. So I've been very good. Busy looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't show that you're busy. Uh, okay. Andrew, I hope you're good too. Yes, I've also been busy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Nashako, I mean, someone will say that you're a superwoman because oh. you work on radio, you're acting. I'm sure you have other gigs that you're doing as well. How do you juggle all these? I try to get other gigs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you do it? Because... Some, some women cannot even handle just family and working. But how do you do it? Me too, I can't. <laughs> you, you... <laughs> well, well I, I think it, it will be a lie to pretend that, you know, mm -hmm. I have some amazing control over all the many parts mm -hmm. of my life and the many things that I do. I'll be pretending if I said it wasn't a struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a struggle. It's, I, I, it's, it's I cannot pretend. You cannot pretend. That it's but you're doing well. But I just try my best to be present, mm -hmm. you know, um, wherever I am. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of things to do, and I have bits of time allocated to all of them. Mm -hmm. I think the way that I'm able to make them work is that when I'm somewhere, I try to be present there. So if I'm at home, there's no way I'm going to pick up work calls. Like, it's not going to happen. Wow. If I'm with my children, I am not going to pick up a call from my boss or from whoever. It's not <laughs> going to happen. The same way when I'm at work, Mm -hmm. I try not to think about the, the house and the kids and what's right. happening in, in class or what's mm -hmm. happening. I try to focus at work. So that's so, why I keep the yeah, balance. That's, that's yeah. what I try to do. I mm -hmm. don't have a balance, but <laughs> I try to be present wherever I am at any given okay. time. Yeah. Now, looking at how you started acting and then you moved to play, I might be yeah, wrong. You're, you're right. Yeah. Yes, you're right. So, I mean, we've had Andrew here and it's obvious that Stage play is so different from acting. I mean, the, uh, screen acting. Yeah, screen acting. Yeah. How do you? How did you transition from that to stage? I think it's normally the other way around. Mm. I think I think it's normally the other way around. Okay. Um, people transition from stage acting to, to main to screen yeah, acting. Yeah. I think that's how it normally mm -hmm. is. Well, for me, I um, did I transition after my very first um major film, the Perfect Picture film. Mm -hmm. I got I got an opportunity to be on stage in that same year for the first time. It was not easy for me knowing that on stage, everything matters, the way you move, the way you breathe, where you look, everything matters and you don't get a second chance. Unlike screen on TV where you can do one thing five times until yeah. you get the right take. Yeah. So I, I got the opportunity to act with a student director from the School of Performing Arts. And I think that was my blessing because at the School of Performing Arts, you are taught the details about stage acting, what it means to go take two steps to the left, what it means to take two steps to the right, what to do when someone is crossing, counter cross, don't use your upper hand, do this and all of that. It was all like, oh, okay, that's so much. But because they were students and they had just learned it in school, they were happy to teach me. Mm -hmm. And so I got the basics from student directors. And I, I think that was the, the good thing. And I was very young at the time, I was 19. And so I could make mistakes and it was pardonable. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was a smooth transition mm. for me, mm. even though I am still learning. Because yeah. in all honesty, people who have been to the School of Performing Arts and have had professional training will know things that I absolutely do not know. And so I still learn from my colleague actors every time on stage. I think you're trying to be humble. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, Andrew will tell you. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I mean, as a, you, you present as well. And for us here, I, I know most of us look up to you because... Oh, thank you. you, you yes. Oh, I mean, thank you. You, you do well with presenting as well. 
And looking at um, the industry, presenting as an industry, would you say that we have things in place to protect presenters, broadcasters, journalists? Would you say that the system is uh, strategized well? To, to protect us from what? Yes. I mean, as our rights, we've had issues where um, some journalists have died because of certain things that they were reporting about and all that. Is, is it, I'm trying to point my question well, but is, it, is this something that, is it an industry that our rights are protected? Do you feel protected? Well, this is a difficult question. If you are referring to the incident with the reporter with um, Anas, Eremia yeah. Anas, that was a very unfortunate one. And it, it affected me on a personal level because of what I know about the journalists and the people who know him. Um, that was an unfortunate incident. Fortunately for us, it's not something we hear about very often. Yeah. It's not something that happens. Um, it was a rare instance. We are sad that it happened. But to speak generally, I would say that it's, it's not, it's not a, a, a scary job to have. I don't think that a lot of presenters will feel that way. Um, we pray that more of such instances do not happen. Mm. And I constantly have commended our new IGP since he came into force okay. for how he has elevated the security on our streets, you know, in the country, especially in the city of Accra where we live. I feel safer now. Yeah. And just, not just as a presenter or a journalist, just as a person who lives in the city. I, I, I don't think that I have a scary job or that I'm, I, I'm afraid of here for my life. You know? <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much. Uh, let me come to you, Andrew. Let's yes. talk about a detective calls. Mm, yeah. Who wrote this particular play? Because I know you mostly are with Uncle Abu White. Yes, yes. Uh, a detective calls is actually a very old play. It was mm. written, I think, now nah, when what? Nineteen seventy-five. Nineteen seventy-five. Okay. By you know one of these uh, very accomplished uh, British uh, playwrights. Yes. And so we are doing a Ghanaian adaptation of that mm. play. So uh, George Quay did his best to adapt it for Ghanaian audiences, uh, give Ghanaian names, Ghanaian locations, and things like that, so that as a Ghanaian, if you're watching, you'll be able to relate to it much better. So that is the, that's the history okay. of uh, a detective calls. In, so that in means brief. you have something to look at when you're doing your rehearsals and all that. Yes, but we didn't really look at the play. We wanted to give our own flavor to it. So um, I doubt many of us have even seen, I haven't seen uh, any of the other adaptations of the okay. play because we wanted to bring what we have as Ghanaians on board for the play to, you know, resonate with Ghanaians. So, yeah, there are, there are many, many adaptations and many performances out there, but we didn't really look at any of that and say, okay, we want to do things the way these people did it or the way these people did it. We had our own way, and we, we, we are going to rock it. <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. Talking about rehearsals, how long did it take for you to rehearse? Not sure you We've yeah. been rehearsing for a while. Yeah. Um, okay. So th the truth about this play is we've been thinking about it since 2011, that's when we first wanted to stage a detective calls, but for many reasons that did not happen. However, last year during World Theatre Day, we were at the Black Star Square with other actors, and among them was Echo Blanson of Blessed Memory. So he said, hey, a detective calls, why aren't we doing it? Because the first time the play was staged at the School of Performing Arts, he played a detective, the role that Andrew now plays. So he said, why aren't we doing it? And George said, yo, you know what, we should do it. So we immediately formed a group chat, you know, called it an inspector calls and put everybody on the group chat. So it was me, Akofa Ijani, wow. um, Jackie Ankra, Echo Blankson, Ajete Anan. We were all on the group. About two weeks before his death, he reached out to George Kwe, or George reached out to him. They had a conversation on WhatsApp about the play. And then two weeks later, we heard that he had passed. Oh. So it was a very difficult, unfortunate piece of news to hear. We were very devastated, and we were contemplating not doing this at all. But then George said, you know what, why don't we do this to honor his memory? Because A Detective Calls really was his play. You know, he's... Anyway. <laughs> so we decided to do this in um, memory of him. We invited his family, we collaborated with them, and then we staged it for the first time at the National Theatre, Andrew Plater Detective, <laughs> <laughs> a month ago, a month and a half ago. Yeah. 
in, in, in honor of his memory. It was a huge success. We got a lot of calls to bring it back. Hmm. We said, well, we we're doing this in memory in honor of Echo Blanc and we've done it. Let's do something else. But then on second thought, we thought, why not? Wow. Let's do it again. So we're doing it again. So to answer your question on rehearsals, we have pre-rehearsed for <laughs> the play. And now we're coming back to do it a second time. Yeah. This time we have one new actor, Elvis Crystal. Um, oh, I know Elvis. You know Elvis. Oh, <laughs> Why awesome. am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we are rehearsing because, yeah. because you, you cannot go back on stage without mm -hmm. rehearsing, no matter how many times yeah. you've done a play. So we are rehearsing this time. Our rehearsal period has been three weeks. So we are still rehearsing. We will rehearse until we go on stage. Even on Saturday afternoon, we shall still rehearse. Because rehearsals don't end for stage acting. <laughs> I know. You just keep going, yeah. But when you talk about rehearsals, you know, uh, how are you able to handle uh, creative differences during rehearsals, especially when one will say, okay, I think this will be better, and that person says a different thing. And then who has the final say? The director. Mm. The director. <laughs> so George Quay is the director for this right. play. But it helps that a lot of the actors on this project are experienced actors. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, George, George is, uh, is, is a very accommodating director. So he, in his mind, it should be this way. But opinions are welcome. He has the final say. I mean, we have Andrew constantly <laughs> chipping in. I mean, I'll ask Andrew, do you think I'm doing this right? right. We all kind of, we, yeah. we have a very friendly community, mm -hmm. you know, all 10 of us, you yeah, know, okay. we're all pretty chill. I mean, everyone is welcome to suggest from the prompter to welfare mm -hmm. to anybody really because it's it's a piece of creative work and with creative work you have to be open to various opinions yeah, you right. know so we all chip in but george quay is the director, director. and he has the final say wait you, you did say 10 10 cast no it's a cast of six um yeah six six yeah it's mm -hmm. a cast of six so there's Being mother sister. father mother yeah. son boyfriend house help Wow. So, right. yeah, it's a cast wow. of six. Okay. Yeah. Before and you tell right. us mm. a, a bit right. about the role you play, <coughs> um, I, I, I want to get how do you conform to a particular role? In film, uh. natural law is different. I've watched your movie. Okay. But I haven't watched you on stage. Okay. And I would love to see the difference. But then, generally, for you, how are you able to conform? To well, all roles are different. Um, before I did a detective calls, the last play I did was the run, run for your, run for a the wife. run for a wife. So I did run for a wife, and then I did five hours with Mario, and then a detective calls. Okay. So before I did a detective calls, I did five hours with Mario, where I played a, a, an angry widow who decided to do a wake, hold a wakekeeping service alone with her dead husband on stage for two hours. That was a monologue, okay. and it was an angry widow. Yeah. So that's like a different person. Emotions, wow. everything. Yeah. That was Emotions, so intense. sadness, <laughs> anger, all of it. In a detective calls, I play a, a 25 year old girl mm. who's in love with her boyfriend and, you know, is, is basically a, 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 has a loud mouth and doesn't respect anybody and <laughs> says her opinions the way, you know, she sees them. Yeah. So these are two different roles. Yeah. There, there is, there's no real art to, to deciding how to be for, for either. What I do is I try to understand what's going on with her. Okay. You know, I, I once heard, I think Andrew, say at a, an actor's forum that you must decide who the character is, you must decide who they are, the other things about them that you don't know, okay. the things that the script does not say yeah. about them. Yeah. You must decide who they are, and then you bring that to the character. Okay. So if she's a 25-year-old girl who's about to get married, you must decide if she has a job, does she like her job, does she have other guys chasing her, does she love her body, is she happy? Is she happy? Yeah. You, know, you must bring all, the script might not say anything yeah. about those things, but you, but you must decide, and then it helps if you know someone like that. So if you know a certain 25-year-old like that, yeah. you, you think <laughs> of her, yeah. and the way she is, and the way she holds her pen, the way she walks, mm -hmm. and the way she even you know, yeah. does her hair, and how she does her hands, you know, yeah. all those things. You must think of those things and then bring okay. them to, to, get to, them to the, character. the character. It's difficult yeah. to tap from one actor you played, the one role you played, you know, carry that into another. It's difficult to do that unless yeah. they are the same Similar. or you've been typecast over the years. And which is more difficult in film and, and stage? I've been asked this question many times. I think, I think stage takes a lot out of you. Okay. You know, I think stage takes a lot out of you. I think it's more difficult. Film is more exciting. 
the, the, yeah. the challenge is different, yeah. you know, because you have to do, you might have to do one thing over and over and over again to get a good take. So it, 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 it's exciting to explore the many ways to do one thing. And you are very certain that the take that will come on TV is your best. True. You can't be sure with stage. Mm. Sometimes you finish something, you feel like you could have done better. Yeah. And so you, you, it's possible to leave stage feeling a little unaccomplished. And that's not good for an actor. Yeah. But for film, you have the opportunity to do it again. And even if you go home, it's over, set over. You go home <laughs> and you reflect. <laughs> like, no, this thing, I don't think I did it right. Yeah. Yeah. It can be redone. But mm. you don't get that with stage. If you're like me and you right. haven't watched now on stage, I think yeah, this is the to. time. <laughs> this is the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But I'm wondering, you know, film, like you're saying, we'll still compare because you know that film somehow is a bit easier than stage plays. And when you have difficulties, you are able to work around it before. But now, when you are having a stage play, how are you able to deal with unexpected challenges mm -hmm. and difficult that may come? How are you able to, you know, work on it, especially when you're already on stage acting? Um, okay. You know if you can well, it, it depends on your level of preparation. Yeah. When you prepare well enough adequately for a play, you are able to better handle some of the unexpected things um, that happen on stage. So um, if you know your lines well and the actor you're playing with forgets a line, you know that, oh, he was supposed to say this here. He didn't say it. So what do I do? Okay. Let me, should I move on to the next now? Should I repeat some things for him to remember that line? Uh, okay. Because it's important. Okay. If it's not that important, we can move on. And you're supposed to do all this within a split second. All these, all that I just said, you're supposed right. to do all that within a split second on the stage, so that you can move on. Yeah. You know, and things like that. So <laughs> if you're not prepared, if you know, if you don't know your lines well, and something happens, unexpected happens on stage, you'll be even more stressed. Yeah. You know, to you know, and it also depends. It also depends on your experience. If you are comfortable enough on stage, and something unexpected happens. You can break character. You can break the fourth wall. Hey, this isn't. Yeah, he, he, did, he was not supposed to do this. He's not supposed to do this. You know, and, and <laughs> right, play and around play with it. Around. You know, uh, uh, Nasha Ko was uh, talking about an incident she had on stage where she was supposed to say she said something off stage that she wasn't mm. supposed to say, and the audience heard it, and she immediately thought of what to do. Came on stage and acted with the lines from the backstage onto the stage, so they thought. Was what she was saying backstage was supposed to be Genius. what wow. she was supposed to say. And that's the example wow. of, you know, wow. yeah, so it's, wow. it's, it's, it's But you know, maybe. Andrew, even outside lines, th things can happen. Mm. So I remember the first time I was on stage, I was on with Lydia Forston, and we were wearing these very fantastic, very tight dresses. Mm -hmm. She was talking, and then she had to bend down <laughs> to do something. And then her split opened up from the end of the split all the way to her waist. That was not supposed to happen. And we were live on stage. So I saw it, she felt it, we looked at each other, and then together we began to walk backwards, backstage. We just started walking backwards together. Now, obviously, right. like nobody knew what was going on, yeah. but because we were all walking backwards, I mean, they just assumed that, okay, it's it's style. Style. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, I, don't, I, I don't know if we held hands, but this was in 2009, I don't know what, like, we just began, so I looked, she looked, we looked at each other, and then we began to retreat. Wow. So we went all the way to the end of the stage. So, you know, outside lines, mm. things can happen. A microphone yeah. can go off. Yeah. I remember once during this play, mm -hmm. uh, the last showing, yeah. my brother's microphone went off on stage. And he was talking. It, it was a very important line. His microphone mm. went off. So I got up and I went to him at the time when I was not supposed to get up. Right. So I got up, went to him and put my arm around his waist and turned his microphone back on. And then we were, I just held him, like I was trying to comfort him, like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I turned <laughs> on, and wow. then we went back. So things, things yeah. happen, yeah. but like Andrew said, the more comfortable and prepared you are, the higher the probability that you can handle such crisis yeah. <laughs> yeah. than if you aren't prepared. Yeah. Okay. What role did you play? I played Miss Ifia Osepuku. Mm. She's a very loud mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> So let, let me give you a, a gist about the play. Yeah. So the, the, the play is about a family mm -hmm. and a dead girl. So a girl commits suicide because of many things. Before she died, she kept a diary where she wrote all of her life's experiences mm -hmm. about the various people she's encountered in her life who have made her sad or feel worthless. Mm -hmm. A detective, Andrew, finds the diary after her death, after she committed suicide. And the information in the diary leads him to the home of a certain prominent Ghanaian. So he goes to the home and has questions based on the things that 
he has read in the diary or journal. Yeah. So the story unfolds based on the many stories in the journal mm -hmm. and the roles that the various members of the family played Maybe, or yeah. did not play in this girl's life unknowingly. So the family is made up of a mother, a father, mm -hmm. a son, and a daughter. I play the daughter okay. who finds out that she had encountered this girl somehow okay. and she might have done or said something Ooh, which, man. yeah. Ooh. So basically that's what the play is about. Okay. So the detective basically is asking questions mm. to the various members of the uh, family. family. Mm -hmm. I, I heard a certain criminal law lecturer say on radio after the play that the play is heavy on criminal procedure and that all law students, <laughs> right. and that all law students should go and watch it. <laughs> so if you're a yeah. law student, Apparently, it's, yeah. it's heavy on what they are teaching you in class <laughs> on criminal <laughs> procedure. Yeah. So come and watch it. The last time we did it, the, mm -hmm. um, the IGP was there. Okay. Wow. Yeah, the IGP and a lot of uh, members of the Ghana Police Force yes. were wow. there yes. to watch mm -hmm. it. And they, they were very happy about the detective mm -hmm. and the Ghana <laughs> Police Force. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Personally for you, what was your takeaway from what laid on stage what was your takeaway to the extent that when people the general public comes to watch how do you want it to resonate with them because it's a story you are telling so personally what was your take and how should it resonate with everyone coming to yeah. watch that play okay that's that's a very popular expression you don't know what people are going through so just be kind yeah. Like, you don't know what Andrew's going through. He's sitting beside you looking so handsome with his fine. <laughs> <friend. laughs> yeah. But you don't know, you really don't know what he's going through. You cannot tell from my face the problems I have. Yeah. Yeah. So the least you can do is just be kind. Be because kind. Yeah. just one word of, oh, now you look so good today, could turn around my day. Yeah. Because I might be sitting here feeling a little, I don't feel so great. I, I don't know, my face is looking yeah, some yeah. way. I feel fat, whatever. And then you just say, oh, now you look so great. Mm -hmm. That statement could just turn around my day. Mm -hmm. In the same way, you see someone like, no, I can see you. Oh. And then, <clears throat> you don't know. This how, statement. You don't, know, yeah. you don't like, I, you know, we are nice people as Ghanaians, but, right. you know, there are things that we need to stop doing yeah. because you really don't know how this statement, you, I mean, why I can see you is not a greeting. Right. <laughs> but when you see someone, that's the first thing you want to say. Yeah. And, and that's, that's just, you know, on the lighter note. Mm -hmm. But there are things that we do and say to people all the time. Someone comes to you with their problem. The next thing they know, everyone is talking about the problem <laughs> they told you about. We do things every day that drive people to feel worthless. Mm -hmm. And so my takeaway from this play is be kind. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know what someone is dealing with. And True. if you can't be kind, just don't deal with them. Walk away. Yeah. Like someone comes to your, your car window, they want money, you can't give them. Just ignore them okay yeah. but some people will go the extra mile to insult you <laughs> and tell you how lazy you are right. when you have no idea exactly so that's my takeaway from the uh, the the okay. play yeah. i i told the story two days ago about one of our cast members who had fired an employee of hers and she told us that during rehearsal like after the second week of rehearsal she called the girl she had fired back not to we admit her because the girl was not doing her work right. But just to apologize for the way she fired her True. and find out if she's doing okay. Yeah. Because the truth is, the fact that you have to be kind to people doesn't mean you must tolerate nonsense. Yeah. Exactly. But it's the way you do it. Yes. You know, it's the way you suck them. It's the way you yeah. do it. It's the way you handle it. So she called this girl back just to check up on her and make sure she's okay. And that, that told me a lot. So... Let's, let's be kind. That's yeah, my let's takeaway. Be kind. And, and then I, Andrew, we, we have to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, we have yes. to wrap up. Andrew, finally, <laughs> yeah. you've been on this table before. Yes. You've done numerous stage play. Mm -hmm. How is this one different from the ones that you've already done? Well, the, this one is tremendously challenging. Okay. You know, um, there's, a, there's a whole lot that the detective has to say, and he has to say it in a certain way that is meaningful, that is impactful, that is loaded with drama and emotion and all yeah. that. Uh, you can't just say one thing. You can't say different things the same way. Okay. Yeah. So I really had to dive into the character and find out every line that he says, the meaning behind it, and the, if the tonation or the inflection fits the meaning I'm trying to convey. Okay. So it's very challenging, in, very challenging. In, in many different ways. So it's happening... 
It's happening this weekend, okay. Saturday and Sunday, on the 3rd and 4th of June. Mm -hmm. It's a family play. It's a play for friends. It's a play for staff of your organization. Mm -hmm. If your police are always for students, bickering, law students. please ask <laughs> yeah. them to come see this play. They will leave yeah. feeling like totally renewed people. Mm -hmm. So you can buy tickets at the gate. You're welcome to do that. It's only 150 Ghana cities. Yeah. But if, if you are, you know, IT inclined like, like me, <laughs> you can go um, to our website, imagebureaugh.com, to buy your ticket or dial our US SSD, star 713, star 101 hash, and choose event code 11. Mm. Star 713. You know, you want to do it with me, okay? Just take out your phone. Star 713, star 101 hash, dial. And then event code is 11. 11. We look forward to seeing everybody there. This is a play that can change your life. Oh, event yeah. code. I, I promise it you. you the event, event code. Event code, yes. Yeah. It's 11. So, you happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's a detective call. Um, yeah. That's a lovely poster. Yeah. That's Andrew looking so mean up there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's not my face for <laughs> more. Yeah. So, this is, this is me shamelessly begging you to come and see our play. I beg <laughs> you definitely come. Be we there. will. Yes. As Thank you. you. you have to which day will you be coming? Um, Sunday, not possible for okay. me. So Saturday, probably Saturday. 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 So we should expect Saturday. you all on yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Please sit in front. So that, okay. <laughs> we can, we can take it. Right. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. We, we start on time. We yeah. like you to know that we start on time. Yeah. 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 If you come at 4.15, we would have already started. If you come at 8.15, we would have already started. And if you miss the first scene of the play, you might be left confused. Yeah, so true. the last time, people who came for 4 p.m. were late, waited, bought tickets for 8 p.m. and watched the beginning of 8 p.m. Oh. so that they could understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so um, we don't want that to happen to you. Right. So please come on time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, a detective calls. Yes. We need a lot of detectives like Andrew. So come and watch him <laughs> and enjoy <laughs> the show. That's it. I mean... Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be glad Thank to have you here. Maybe discuss something else. Yes. yes. Please call me anytime. <laughs> Those who are sending me a message and I want tickets, like, please go and buy. Go and buy. Go buy. Go Don't send me a message. You want tickets, you'll get tickets. Support anyway. the arts. Support yes. the arts. Yes. Yes. Buy a ticket. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a big shout out to Elvis Crystal. I'll see you when I see you. <clears> okay. <throat> <laughs>